When, when I got to college, the year that I broke my ankle in 93, 92, 93, when I broke my ankle, be, right before I broke my ankle that summer, I, I didn't smoke weed that whole summer. No, 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 I take that. I smoked weed. It was like once or twice that whole summer. Once or twice that whole summer, I had smoked weed. So to me, it was like I didn't smoke weed. But like once or twice that summer, I had smoked some weed. And, um, but I, what I did, I was, I was, man, I had like a, I had a personal trainer guy, this guy that me and uh, Seaway and Willie and uh, a lot of us, you know, that was without a doubt supposed to be in the league. We trained with this trainer. You know, we ran like hills. I can't remember that famous park in California, but it's, we ran uh, ran these like hills, like mountain hills. And uh, we just trained that whole summer. And it's like, uh, just my intention was going to the lead. You know, wasn't nothing gonna stop me from going to the lead. I had got up to like 215 pounds. I just felt real slow, but I had like 3% or 6%. I had like so three or 6%, something so low on body fat. It was just all muscle. And my intention was to go to the league, you know, to make million, millions of dollars, just make that money and get to the league. So I pushed everything aside. Like I said, I smoked marijuana once or twice that whole summer. And uh, my whole, I was just, I was working out, you know, just working out, getting it. And uh, I was telling God, I was like, God, you know, and that wasn't the first, it was times before in the past I had tried to quit smoking weed. And uh, I was telling God, like, you know, hey, you know, I've tried to quit, you know, and even though I've quit for a few months, I've always ended up coming back smoking it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so only you can stop me from smoking weed. I was, you know, like I say, he had that door of honesty and truth where I could see him and I was still defi uh, still explaining my life and my situation. But I could still see that door from where he was allowing me to be honest and truthful. And honest and truth was like, you're the only one who can stop me from smoking weed, God. You haven't stopped me yet. You know what I'm saying? So you the only one that can stop me. You know what I'm saying? Take the desire away. So at the end of the prayer, it was like, your will be done. If you want me to smoke, if you, if it's okay to smoke, let me speak smoke. If it's not okay, only you can stop it. But at the end of it, it was your will be done. That was my prayer right there. That was it. So that day, after that prayer, that was the very last time, the very last time to this present day that I've ever smoked marijuana. Ever, 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 ever smoked marijuana. Now, it wasn't the very last time I had a desire for marijuana. I had a desire for the marijuana one more time after I said that prayer. And what I mean for a desire is that I wanted to smoke some weed after that one more time. The, the next time I wanted to smoke some weed, some marijuana, this time I wasn't hustling or nothing else, selling no, uh, you know, I wasn't hustling in prison no more after this. I was trying to get some money sent in to me. I thought I had a little bit of money left. And, uh, you know, it's a whole nother situation, a whole nother, a whole nother blessing but I didn't have any more money left and I was trying to get money sent to me and the money wasn't coming when it was opportunity because a lot of times you don't have opportunities to always buy uh, weed in prison, you know what I'm saying? Because of whatever, you know, situation, just like out here, you know, droughts and different situations, jams and everything else happened. But uh, I couldn't get no, I couldn't get no funds sent to me to get some, to buy, to purchase some while I was in prison. And that was, that was the first situation. So that passed. And that was the only desire I had. Now my second, it was three times. And now God told me, I would, another thing I didn't tell you guys. A lot of these things that are happening to me, God kind of, he, not, he tells me. He tells me that like a, it was another time what happened with a guard, a guard harassing me. God told me I would go through something seven times. And at the end of it, even though I go through it, I would for, kind of forget about it, that, that he told me this conversation. And then at the end of it, I'd glorify his name. So it ended up happening. Just like God said, I went through a situation seven times with a uh, guard kind of harassing me and, and chasing me and stuff. And uh, 
you know, your anger and everything else takes over during the test and you kind of black out during the test. You don't remember so much what's going on during the test. But at the end of it, when some search certain happened and I went, I passed, I made it, I passed, but I made it through the test. God gave me remembrance on what he told me that I would go through this seven times. And then he showed me each situation I went through seven times. And after I went through them seven times, how I just, I couldn't do nothing, but just like, man, I start watering, just telling God, thank you. You know what I'm saying? You just so, just thank you for everything. You showing me, teaching me, just glorifying his name. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, giving me the strength to make it through those. And then on top of that, giving, loving me enough to tell me that I'm going to go through something. You know, tell him. God doesn't have to tell us. He don't have to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? But he told me that I would go through something. Then I went through it. And then he gave me remembrance that I told you you was going to go through this. And after you go through this, you was going to glorify my name. Same thing happened. So the same thing like with this right here. He told me I was going to go through this. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was going to go through three situations. And I went through the three. But it's different the way he kind of explained that. You know, my remembrance is not right on that right now. He's not giving me what he told me. But I, I went through it. My second situation was he had spoke to me. And then, like I say, anytime when, when God speaks to you, and you hear him without a shadow of a doubt. Man, it's amazing. It's like, it's just like, it's undescribable. It's just undescribable. You know, it's, it's it, the highest high, I can't describe it. The, nothing can describe the, um, the the amazingness of when God speaks to us, guys. When he speaks to us, man. When he speaks to you. And, like prophecy, you know, he's telling you something, you know, dealing with life, Proph prophetic, you know, like this is what's going on. And it's so man, so amazing. So he had spoke to me. And then when he had spoke to me that day, I had one of my homeboys, Beaumont's. His name was Beaumont. He was from Beaumont, Texas. And uh, give or take, how you call it. So he was from Beaumont, Texas. And uh, he came in there one day and said, hey, cuz, man. We know you, don't, we, we in the homeboys, we know you, you know, you, you changed your life around, cuz, and uh, we know you, you know, we're missing you, you ain't kicking with us no more, you don't hang out with us no more, cuz, we're missing you, but we just want to tell you, hey, cuz, we still love you, we thinking about you, man, he came in there and threw some marijuana and some cigarettes, <laughs> some cigarettes and marijuana all over my locker, and said, we know you don't, you don't kick it with us no more, cuz, but he said, hey, you do whatever you gonna do with this. You go sell it. You smoke it. You do whatever you gonna do with this, cuz. But it's yours, cuz. You know, we, it's yours. And took off and ran out the door before I could give it back to him. And uh, so, like I said, I spoke to God. When you're in the presence of God, you know right and wrong. Period. Just period. You know right and wrong. We all know right and wrong. But once God speaks to you, and once you're in His presence, it's like without a shadow of doubt, He shows you what's evil and what's not evil. So. Uh, I hurry up and got that weed and flushed it down the toilet. All of it, just flushed it down the toilet. You know, I wasn't going to sell it. Of course, I wasn't going to sell it. And then I wasn't going to smoke it. God had just spoke to me. I didn't have no desire to, to infiltrate my body with nothing. You know, I, I didn't have no desire to get high and none of that nonsense then. So I flushed the weed and then I got the, I kept the uh, cigarettes. All God's will. So I'm telling you, we don't understand God's ways. You don't understand God's ways. I kept the cigarettes. Even though it's illegal to have cigarettes in the prison, and you ain't supposed to be, because uh, they didn't sell cigarettes no more at this point in time. They stopped selling cigarettes in like uh, 2003 or four. They barred cigarettes in federal prisons. And uh, But anyway, I had, I kept I kept the, the cigarettes. Okay, so I got the cigarettes. I ain't smoked them or nothing else. So this is a... Uh, so now this is my third situation coming up. It comes in New Year's Day. So New Year's Days, I'm kind of like a, you know, New Year's in prison, you got holidays. It's kind of like a, you know, it's like, man, you're trying to be festival and everything, man. But it's like, man, you, your family, you know, you ain't out there with your family. You ain't walking around free like that. You dig? So it's a whole, you know, you, you want to say depression. But it's kind of like a little depression rises up on you, man, when you're in prison and you're on holidays. Holidays is a lot tough. It's, it's tough on, on, on <laughs> it's real tough. You know what I'm saying? Even though you might have big cookouts in prisons, big kicking it, whatever to say, being in prison, man, it's tough on holidays. It makes it a lot worse because your mind goes from out of prison to like your family. Like, man, this is what we would have been doing. This is what they doing. Oh, man, I'd have been right over there eating turkey. You know, I'd have been over there doing the same thing, this, that. Your mind goes different ways. So it's a, it's a little rough <laughs> on holidays. So on New Year's, I got the cigarette and I could hear God say, go ahead. I I probably had even forgot about the cigarette or something, but I do remember God giving me the impression of go ahead, go ahead. 
So I got the cigarette and I lit the cigarette up. I took one puff of it. I was like, wow. I took another puff of it. At that moment, I took that second puff. God took me from where I was right at right then to a point in time when I was a little kid living here in Wichita Falls when my mama was smoking a cigarette in the car and had the windows rolled up and I was in the car choking. The cigarette was literally choking me in the car. God took me back to that point in time. It was like I was right there again, right there again, choking. It's, it's like undescribable to, to tell you how, you know, how he brought me back to that exact point in time. Something I had never thought about my whole life. You know, I hadn't thought about that, nothing. He had brought me right back to that point where I was in that car choking. And as I'm choking, he gives me remembrance. He's talking to me, telling me, say, this is why you don't, you don't smoke. This is why you don't smoke. This stuff does not belong in, inside of you. You know, like God calls us his temple. You know, we're a holy temple. It's where the Holy Spirit dwells. You know what I'm saying? What's good can't dwell in the presence of what's evil. It can't, it can't not dwell in the same space. It can't dwell it can't. in the same space. God showed me and he explained to me like, this is why you don't smoke. This is why you don't do drugs. This is why all this stuff doesn't belong in you. It's, it's not natural. It's not right. That was the very last time I smoked a cigarette. And then, like I say, I hadn't smoked weed since I had said that prayer and I'd asked God will to be done. So I hadn't smoked weed. And this is this, this is not like a long period of time, guys. It's probably like a three or four months left of time since I said that prayer. You know, it wasn't like a long years. And it was like three or four months since I asked God his will be done till New Year's. So when I said the prayer, it was just probably, it couldn't have been no earlier than mid-summer to after late summer that I had said that prayer to New Year's Day when I smoked that cigarette. And not only was that the last time that I smoked a cigarette, it was the last time that I drank alcohol. Now, alcohol was like an extra added thing on to it. I hadn't drank no hooch since I say that prayer. We called it hooch in prison. I hadn't drank no hooch. And then it was, it's also real gin and everything else come in prison too now. They, they had real drink too, but make, you know, you make hooch or whatever. I hadn't drank no real gin, no real nothing hooch. I hadn't drank. <laughs> I hadn't drank since I said that prayer. And not drinking wasn't even part of my mind. Like I said, I, I, weed was my thing. Smoking weed was my thing. So my mind, I always focused on intentionally getting high, smoking some weed. But I hadn't drank. And it was never just really played into my mind and my thoughts that I hadn't been drinking since I said that prayer. All I know was, you know what I'm saying, I had three situations where I, God was showing me about smoking, you know what I'm saying? And I was put in them three situations by smoking. But while I'm in them three situations by smoking, I ain't drank nothing in that time neither. So at the end of it, that day when I smoked that New Year's, when I smoked that last cigarette, was the last time that I had anything in my body that don't go in my body physically now. I've had thoughts and everything else that God's works on and has corrected me on. And, you know, the spirit is a spiritual battle. It's a real battle. But physically, that was the last time that I've ever smoked. Last time I've ever smoked. The last time I've ever drank alcohol. Now, in saying all that, just to let you know, it's not me. I don't, I've never had a desire to smoke. I've never had a desire to drink alcohol. When, when I first got home, I can't remember. I was asking my wife the other day when she came. When my sister had threw a party. When I first came home, my sister gave me a party. And then she also gave a party when my wife first came here to America. And during one of those times, they kept trying to tell me, say, man, 
drink the champagne with us. Drink the champagne with us. They had champagne in the bottles and all that. And I was like, man, I don't drink. I ain't got no desire to drink, no nothing, man. And uh, I could hear God telling me, it's okay. It's okay. I could hear the spirit telling me, just go ahead. It's okay. I got the drink. I put it to my lips. I had a little bit of taste on my tongue. And I almost threw up. I almost threw up. Real talk. I almost threw up. No desire. I got just sick like that. Just touching on my tongue. I got sick like that on the alcohol. God is real, man. You ask them prayers. You be honest with God. You talk to him about whatever the situation is in life. God deals with it. He deals with it. But you got to do all you can to be honestly in trust and faith and belief in him. You know what I'm saying? I remember like when I was first having things, I could hear God telling me, believe and trust and do this and do that. I could hear these words talking to me all the time in the Bible. I got to the point to tell God, like, I am believing, ain't I? I am. Like when my mama had cancer, my mama was dying. And I kept like, you know, God, I won't bring my, don't, don't let my mama die. Heal the cancer from my mama. You know what I'm saying? Let me out of prison so I can go be with my mama. You know, let me go out there and change my life. Let me be out there with my mama. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't. Don't let me lose my mama. Same way my Uncle Victor. Same thing when I first got in prison. He had cancer and was dying. Uncle Victor, that was my man. Man. Man, like that. That was that was my mate right there. My running mate, man. And um, I can remember just praying. Like, I'm still new to the Bible. I'm still asking you shall receive. Seeking you shall find. Knocking the door shall be open. I'm still new to it. So I'm knocking, but I'm knocking, you know, I'm knocking on the wrong doors. You know what I'm saying? Like God teaches us when you put in the right petition, you have to put in the right petitions. The right petitions are the petitions that go in with God's will, what's God's desire for our lives. What God knows is what's best for us to give him the glory, not for us to get the glory, for him to get the glory. He knows everything, all things. So the petitions I was putting in, they were more of my petitions, what my desires were, mine. Not the, the true desire, you know, my, my true desire is salvation, to, to be with Christ forever, everlasting. That's my true, at this time, any other desire is kind of like surface, personal. The true desire is to be with, is Jesus Christ. Everybody's true desire is Jesus Christ. That's your true desire. Nothing else but to hear God speak with you, to walk with God, to be with God, to be in his presence. That's our true desires. Everything else is superficial, pretty much. You know, to me, I believe in. But Jesus Christ is our true desire. Once you know him, you find out who he is. Man, it's, it's, not, it's, it's Jesus. It's nothing else. It's Jesus. You know, and uh, so I don't know how I got on that. I was telling you about... Uh, uh, but anyway, that was the last time I spoke. And uh, what I was trying to say is, man, it's, it's just when we when we go to God with all we have, all honesty, if, if you don't believe God is real, if you don't believe Jesus is real, you know, I got some homeboys, friends, whatever you call them growing up. Some of them talk about Buddha, Muslim, Islam. I don't know how it go, but uh, I got some friends, you know, and, uh, you know, man, I hate to say it, not really hate to say it, but I know it's not. I like I even had some friends call themselves like God, you know, say call themselves God, describe because I guess the teaching tells them that they're gods, you know, and like even in prison when I was in prison before, I, I learned a little bit about uh, Muslims. I think it was I had a homeboy Fred Lope, and uh, he had some old people. He used to always they used to take him to the meetings and he used to always want me to go and just kind of hang out and chill. They used to feed, do different. They used to have a lot of privileges in prisons, you know. They get special meals and stuff, uh, kosher meals, that they call them. They get certain things. So just you can go and eat different stuff. You know, it just you kind of like Satan blocks you into a certain situation. Then from that certain situation, you kind of you can be in a certain situation where you want some good of food, better food. Being in a, You got to be in this group over here to get some better food or some good of food. So now you're going to go join and be an Islam to get you some better food, get some better privileges. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Man, the enemy is real, man. He's real cunning, man. He's the deceiver. God is not called the deceiver. He's called the deceiver. So if he's the deceiver, think about it. If he's the deceiver, all deceit to every maximum level, to every depth, not no maximum level, to every depth of deceit, that's who he is. <laughs> he's deceiving. To every depth, he's deceiving. 
So um, what I was just saying, just being honest, we be, when we be honest with God, you know, he, he, he answers us. And he, he opens up the door to a more deeper meaning, a more depth of the truth. You know what I'm saying? We give him the truth as best we know it. We don't know the truth on truth on being true because we, we're not... We're not God. We're not, God is the truth. You know, Jesus is the truth. He's righteousness. We're not righteousness. God is. So when we do all we can and we keep beating on that door with all honesty that we have, all the honesty and all the truth and all, all we are, we beat on that door, he'll open it for us. And when he open it for us, it's, 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 it's painful sometimes. You know, it's, it's painful. Real talk. It's, it's painful. Like, you know, even my mom was dying. My Uncle Victor was dying when they was passing away. When they was passing away, it was like, man, he was showing me how rotten I was. You know what I'm saying? And even, you know what I'm saying? My mama dying, she's still smoking cigarettes and stuff like that, worrying about me. You know, he, it's, it's painful. It's, it's real painful when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're knocking on that door, man. <laughs> it's painful when he opens it. When he opens it. Because now you see the truth on everything. But it's mercy. His mercy, his mercy covers us, guys. His mercy covers. And then after he covers us with that mercy, he gives us that grace. And with that grace is coming that joy like, man, this is my second chance. This is my new day. It's not the same old yesterday. This is my new day. You know, a day I get to go on and do what's right. I can take some, some righteous steps today. You know what I'm saying? And, um... I'm gonna leave it at that. This went on a little longer than when I expected. Looking like 45 minutes. I ain't sure if that's right. But um, that's it. Till later on again, everybody. This is day of rest here. My wife got to smell it super excellent in here. She been get down over there. Go on, yo. I love you. She got that fancy dress on. She got that fancy dress on too, y'all. Goodness gracious. Bye bye. This is it.